As a meeting here in Davos kicks off, uh, a lot of conversation on what the Trump era means, the definition of inequality, the failure of globalization, and of important strategic changes to come. But to give us a perspective on a very special report that the World Economic Forum has just uh, released is Richard Samans, who is a board member. Richard, explain to us what the forum is saying about the very def definition of inequality because here we are standing uh, in Davos at a time where Oxfam is saying that eight billionaires control more than 50 percent of the world's wealth. What our report does is focus on what can be done to both uh, boost growth, which you need to do, the pie has to expand if we're going to bring everybody up, but also to get a better uh, distribution, if you will, of the benefits and the opportunities created by growth. So we're focused very much on what are the practical tools. We find in this report that actually our mental model of economic growth has been a little bit off base for the last uh, couple of decades. We've been spending too much time just focusing mainly on macroeconomic policy or trade policy per se, but domestically there are, there are 15 different areas of structural institutional strength where if you get it right, it can have payoff for both growth and social equity. And we lay that out and we also present a new metric, a new measurement of national economic progress that includes GDP, but has 11 other areas that really matter for what people consider the bottom line success of an economy, which is rising living standards. So what you're saying is that the overall metric of, say, India having a better GDP or better income for those people is not as important as it is that there are so social interpretations of this very definition. Can you explain that in the Indian perspective? Yes, I think it's very important for an economy to grow and for it to see in the financial pages of newspapers that in fact GDP is advancing. That's important. But for most people, what matters is their income, the opportunity, are there, are, is, are there labor force uh, employment opportunities available for them? Economic security, do they have any backstop behind them uh, to help them? Is there any kind of a social insurance system and whatnot? And their quality of life. All of these things are what we talk about when we say living standards. Broad-based progress in living standards is what you could think about as the bottom line measure of national success economically, whereas growth is the top line. You need both. And in fact, there's a feedback between growth and equity. If equity is terrible, it actually undercuts growth, research has shown. On the other hand, if you have broad-based rise in living standards, that creates more demand for products, that creates more business uh, investment, and that boosts growth. And so it's the, the trick is getting into a virtuous circle rather and out of a vicious circle. And many countries have not optimized the strategy to be able to do so. So does this report also in some ways counterbalance what Oxfam is saying about inequality? Because, you know, we have a big headline. Last year it was 62 people control half the world's wealth. Now it is just eight people which control half the world's wealth. Is there a real fear uh, that this capital capitalism as a system is actually prompting more inequality? And how do you or the forum address that? Well, first, uh, the numbers on wealth inequality are troubling. There's no doubt about that. In fact, in our data, we see that about three quarters of countries have seen wealth inequality grow 6% or so uh, in the last period. Now, the, the more, most important message here, though, is that rising inequality is not a given. It's, it's not an iron law of capitalism. It's actually something you can work on and policy can address. And that's the main focus of our report. We think many countries are missing win-win opportunities for growth and equity because they've got the wrong mental map and they don't have quite the right compass setting. Growth is important, but, uh, but you know, social inclusion and broad-based progress in living standards is really the bottom line, and that's what the compass should be set on. And so, in a way, uh, you can view what we've got here as a practical response to the very big p p problem that uh, the Oxfam report and others are painting. So the report is almost painting capitalism as a villain. How would you say that that is different? I know you're saying that we are cognizant of those uh, problems and the forum is trying to address it as, as is the meeting of the business elites. But do you feel somewhere the messaging hasn't been all that clear, uh, especially from the business uh, viewpoint, saying that 100 million people have also gotten out of poverty in the last one year. So it's not all about this rising inequality, but also this obliteration of poverty. Yes, of course. I think you're referring to their report when you say that, that you know they think capitalism is the problem. In, in our view, it's it's getting the model adjusted 
uh, there are significant problems, but there's no doubt that modern market economies have accomplished a lot for society around the world, including uh, in India and many other parts of the developing world. We've seen a lot of people come out of poverty, uh, but it is no doubt that it's not performing adequately. And the question is, are we prepared to shift our priorities? Uh, review some of our assumptions. Most countries have been relying very heavily on um, macroeconomic measures, which uh, usually there's very limited space left, particularly after the, the crisis and when exchange rates are moving. So that really uh, limits the policy autonomy or the room to maneuver for many governments. Uh, and other countries are excessively reliant upon big trade surpluses. You can't always rely. These are both kind of temporary growth engines. What our s report is suggesting is that there's an internal growth engine that's good for both for people and, and society, living standards, but also good for growth that we've been missing because we've had kind of the wrong mental configuration for growth. And then secondly, there's another report that uh, Business Commission on Sustainable Development will be coming out today. It's not a form report, but it's, it's laying out a big uh, suggestion for how business strategy can adjust to see big growth opportunities that benefit society. I, we see that there's a new growth and development agenda emerging through a change in economic policy on the one hand and a new awareness of the business opportunities in, in the uh, sustainable development goals. Okay, one final question. In this era of Donald Trump and rising protectionism across the world, how is India faring? The positives and the negatives on your assessment, which is forward-looking, uh, not of India's past. Yes, yeah, so, so we have uh, released this new measure of national performance, which is called the Inclusive Growth, I'm sorry, the Inclusive Development Index. And this is an alternative to just looking at uh, a country's GDP per capita. Just, GDP is just the, the amount of goods and services an economy produces. It doesn't tell you much about how healthy the people are, how, how many job opportunities there are, you know, how well set up for the future, et cetera. India scores, uh, I think, 60th. Uh, among developing countries, so not terribly high, uh, and it has some significant weaknesses in, in many of the 12 key performance indicators we see. But on the bright side, we also look at the trend. The last five years, India has been moving up very, very nicely. So you can see, particularly in, in terms of growth and even some aspects of inclusion, the trend is in the right direction. Richard Simmons, many thanks indeed for speaking with NDTV, and good luck with the forum. My pleasure. Same to you. Thank you.